Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to take us through the NASDAQ for Friday, July the 14th trading. And I think that how I want to do my analyses going forward is really talk through them through the present tense as though you were experiencing it live. Um, because that's how you actually trade, right? You don't trade in the past tense, you trade in the present tense. So um, this is, uh, we'll start with the regular trading hours and then maybe I'll talk about London session. Um, these are our regular trading hours here and let's break down. So let's say we start uh, at, we start at the open at 09, 09.30 and let's look and see where, you know, going through the market step by step and where we could have had some entries. So let's get down to the one minute right on the open. Okay, so market opens up and we trade higher. All right, we have an opening reprice candle trading higher. We get three green candles. So the first three minutes of trading open up. First PD array or multiplier that you get is right here, these two black candles. Okay, so first trade opportunity comes one tick above that high. Um, and what would your target be? Well, you don't have any prior price action at this point to work with. So the only thing that you really could do is take a standard deviation projection. So we take a standard deviation projection of our order block there. We've entered in. And you could aim for one standard deviation, which would be 68 up to, that would be a 13 point trade, or you could aim for two standard deviations. All right, so you get long on a stop order right there so you're filled long we're on a one minute time frame right on the open because there's lots of orders coming in there's a lot of order flow so you should be on the one minute probably right on the open so you get long on a buy stop right right above this order block and your uh, stop would be down here okay the aim for two standard deviations higher and that's your first trade of the day all right Market moves higher and we end up putting a short term high up here at 18.03 spot 75. Market trades down and we end up finding support here on this black candle. Okay. At that point, if you see that the market has found support on the same order block you could have entered in on the first time, you could, uh, second trade of the day could come in right here on a market order. That's an option. Okay. And you would aim for the high that you just made. So that would be another um, 36.75 trade, okay? So you could enter in at the market. Once you see that the market is respecting that same order block and it comes down to about the 50% and you get a strong reaction, stop would go in the same exact place, okay? And this is really how I want to do my price analyses from this, this way going forward, to talk through like trades because a price analyst is not a trader. I mean, you have to be both, but anyways. Okay, so we get long there at the market as the market respects that order block. Our stop is going to go below the order block. We aim for the first high. We get filled. We then get a period of consolidation here. Um, you do see a bearish order block here. You could enter in on a stop there, aim for lower. Obviously, uh, that did not work out. You would have to get a break-even stop there, and at that point, you would be... Uh, you'd be break even on that trade if you tried to get short there. So institutional order flow is still going up at this point. And let's talk about where your next trade comes in. So next trade comes in, you could either get long at the market as soon as you see it respecting that black candle there. You could just get long at the market and aim for a standard deviation higher or buy stop right there. So that candle would be an order block or that these two candles would be a two minute order block. So one minute order block or two minute order block. And again, we're going to take our standard deviation projection and see, you know, where that takes us. So aim for one up to one and a half standard deviations. If you get long on that entry. Okay. So New York AM session was trading up. Um, we put in another black candle here. The same idea, you could get long on a stop there. Okay, we're moving up and at some point the market puts in a high, right? We put in our high here at 1024. And at 1024, that's a pretty good time for price to put in a high. We've moved multiple standard deviations higher and 
at that point, it's a pretty good idea that the market might have put in a high. So where would you start taking shorts? Well, you could take a short one tick below that order block there. Stop would go up here. Where would you aim? You would aim back for that low right there. That would be your trade. Where could you also have gotten in on that swing down other than up there? Um, order block right here, one tick below that, filled short. Order block right here, one tick below that, you're filled short. It's also an immediate rebalance. Okay? And you would be on side there, getting short as we come down. Now let's get up to a five minute chart. I don't want to spend too much, or let's go to a three minute chart. I don't want to spend too much time on this video. Um, and we're going to look after the market put in a high. We're going to be up on the three minute chart. Okay, so we're entering in on market orders and on stops. So market comes up to this order block. You see that it's respecting. You could get short at the market right there where my cursor is. Um, where is your next short opportunity? One tick below that candle's low right there. You come into some drawdown. Stop is up here. You're aiming for nearest low right there. Okay, that would be the next trade. Um, and let's see where New York lunch starts. So uh, let's get on the New York lunch session is going to be from 1200 to 1330. So let's look at where our New York lunch opportunities were. New York lunch is a time period in which the market should draw to liquidity, to draw to stops. And so you saw here that we put in relative equal lows right there. And so it's likely that if you see the order flow is looking like it's going down, it's probably at least going to aim for those relative equal lows and the stop swell there. So Michael teaches that New York lunch runs from 1200 to 1330 and it should have a stop run. So lunch trading, where are your lunch opportunities? Well, obviously just get short on a sell stop below that green candle, that's an option. Next option, short below that green, that order block right there. As we move on, um, the market retraces. You see one, two, three, four, five green candles, so 15 minutes of up movement. Um, if you see that the market appears to be respecting this black candle right here, kind of the midpoint of it, you could get short at the market right where my cursor is. Now, you could get short here, and that did end up working out. That'd be a little bit risky, but you know that the market's probably drawing down to those relative equal lows. So that's your next kind of trade entry there on the New York lunch. At that point, after the market comes out and takes out those relative equal lows, you should probably be flat. Um, and that, those would be your trades for the New York lunch session. Now let's look at the New York PM session. And let's go uh, from 1330 to 1600. I, you know what, the days of me like analyzing price and not looking at it like, you should look at it real time. Like how would you actually view this as it were happening, as it was happening, and where were the trade opportunities? That's how the trader in you should think. The price analyst does not make the money. The trader makes the money. So, okay, where's the next trade opportunity? Well, this, this area right here kind of had me fooled. I'm not going to lie. I thought that New York PM session was going to mirror AM session, go run AM liquidity. But let's say that you didn't make the same mistake that I made. See those two relative equal lows there? Those two green candles right there? Stop order right below that. Okay, that's your next trade for the PM session. Okay, so you have a sell stop right there. It's triggered and you're immediately in profit. Next trade op opportunity. You see that, that the market right there forms a measuring gap or a breakaway gap, right? Doesn't trade back into it. Hit the market. Hit it short right as you see that the market comes back up and does not want to trade back into that gap. Hit it at the market. That's the next trade. So we're trying to follow what the trading algorithms are doing. We're trying to stay on side. Next trading opportunity. These three candles right there, you know that that's going to be a bearish order block if we trade below. Sell stop right there. Again, we can see, let's see if we move down one standard deviation. We do. So you get short right there at 703. You get filled at 78. And so that's a 23 point trade right there. So it's one, one tick below those three green candles, the low of that one tick below. You get filled short 
immediately goes to your profit target. Beautiful trading, beautiful scalping right there. Um, market on close macro is from 1515 to 1545. Let's get down to a one minute chart. So 1515 to 1545. Market should make some sort of a run on stops. Any trading opportunities in this macro time? I would not like it. I'm not going to lie to you. It would not be, I would not trade that. I just wouldn't. Let's go back up to a three minute time frame and let's expand out to the very end of the day. Where was your sort of absolute last trading opportunity for the day? A couple of different ideas. So number one, and I did see this happen. Uh, there's a SIBI right there. Okay. Price is trading in, up, down, and all around that SIBI. When you see that price is appearing to want to invert that SIBI and go take out some short-term buy side, you can hit it at the market. And your stop, yeah, you might have been stopped out on that unless you put it a few ticks below, which on the NASDAQ, it's a good practice that your stop needs to be one or two points below the low. So you could see that inverted fair value gap hit it at the market. You probably were stopped out unless you were using a wider stop. And then three minute time frame. Um, so that's an inverted fair value gap. Now let's talk about any order block entries. So one tick above these two black candles, and then you aim for that three minute SIBI right there, and you end up getting filled at the very end of the day, and that's a 13 point scalp. Okay? So that has been your trade opportunities on the NASDAQ that I can quickly see visually. Um, all of your kind of good looking scalping opportunities. And now let's go to electronic trading hours and let's look at the overnight session. So from, we'll take it from midnight up into here. And let's get on a five minute chart. And I'll just tell you there were a few trading opportunities here for you. So New York open midnight, your daily profiles, put it there. And let's look at where we had some reasonable trade opportunities. So five minute chart, New York open midnight's consolidating. It's really giving you nothing. Um, I wouldn't, I would not want to play any of this. The, the only thing that I do see is you see that black candle over here. You see how price, you see how price was respecting the 50% of that. You put your stop a few ticks below that black candle. You get long at the market anywhere in here and wait for price to go take out these relative equal highs. So that was a long opportunity there. Uh, first long opportunity in the New York open uh, midnight session. Now, like a seven point scalp would be if you see the markets coming above these candles, that's a bullish order block. You aim for these relative equal highs. And yeah, that's like a seven point trade. But if you're scalping, seven points is what it is. So you did have a long opportunity there on the Frankfurt open. All right, let's see what our opportunities to the sell side were. Big green candle here. Markets above the New York Open Midnight price, above those relative equal highs. If the market trades below, one tick below that big green candle, stop goes up here, where would your target be? Well, the price ended up targeting that buy side imbalance, sell side inefficiency over there. So that would, the top part of that would be a very good um, target. And that trade was 724 down to 701. That's a 23 point uh, scalp. So that was available to you there during the London session. Second trade idea. Okay. Big black candle there. As you see that the market appears to be respecting the 50% of that and 0200 is a very odd time for price to put in the high for the day. So you know that high is probably going to get ran. So a couple of factors there. You see that the price is respecting the closes are respecting the 50% of that black candle. Get long at the market. That's an option. Second option, if we're talking about entering it on a stop, right there, buy stop right there, or buy stop right there. Where's your target? 0200 high. Okay, Could have drawn up to that high, but you don't know that going in. So you get long at the market here, or you get long uh, on a stop there, or long even on a stop here. That's 7, uh, 718 and you're aiming for 731, that would be a 13 point trade. Not bad. If you're long at the market down here, 706 to 731, 25 point trade. 
long above that black candle there, one tick above. That's 708. You'd get long at 708 quarters, and you're aiming for that high, 731 halves. So that's like a 23-point trade right there. Okay? So we're scalping. We're playing both sides of the marketplace. Five-minute chart, London session. That might have that black candle might have taken you for a loop and you might have taken the wrong direction. Where's our next trade opportunity? Well, that one tick below that green candle is an option, or one tick below these green candles is an option. Where would your target be? Low down here or low right there. Okay, so you could go from short right there on that bullish bearish order block 713, aim for uh, that low 698. And that's a trade right there. Also, institutional order flow entry drill. So if you're looking at fair value gaps instead of order blocks, I kind of look more at order blocks now. But anyways, you see that the market, you have a SIBI right there. Take that SIBI into quarters. You see that it respects exactly at the half. Short at the market, aim for the low. Okay. So we're just going through the London session trades. All right, market is delivered on sell side, so at this point you're flat. Let's see where we could have taken this leg up. Okay, at this point, I would not be trading, you know, during this period of consolidation. So from 0555 to 0700, I wouldn't even bother trading that. Uh, where does your first entry come in? Buy stop above that black candle or buy stop above that black candle? Why? Price trades above it, good chance that order flow has changed. Where are you targeting? SIBI right there. Okay. So 698.75, aim for the low of that green candle, 717, three quarters. That's a scalp right there. Okay. And then, um, is there any way that you could have gotten in here on the, the New York market, the stock exchange open? Well, right there. You know, the market looked like it was drawing lower, but you know, you don't know exactly where the market's going to go, but you know if it trades one tick above that high, order flow is probably turned bullish, right? So that would be a bullish order block. You get long there and ride the initial volatility higher. Okay, and that would be... Um, multiple standard deviations of that order block. You take a three standard deviation trade or further if you, if you were holding on to it. So, in this video, I covered the trade opportunities, scalping opportunities during the New York uh, regular trading hour session for Friday, uh, July the 14th, and I also covered the overnight and London session trade opportunities for Friday, July the 14th. Bye.